gotta see some battery. Such a good man. <laughs> Taking care of me. So uh, tell me, tell me about your book. My book. First of all, yes. this is Doctor Chikaya. Chikaya, not Tukai. Chikaya. Chikaya. From the Congo. From the Congo, and more importantly, from the Warrior Fitness and Wellness Camp in Santa Clarita, California. I couldn't bring myself to say that last part. I just <laughs> like the Warrior. <laughs> so, Doc, tell me about your story. Um, I was born premature with sickle cell disease. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, premature seven and a half months. Okay, let me preface this by saying this is backstage beyond the last week, maybe more. Mm -hmm. And this is Dr. Chikaya from the Fitness Wellness Center, and this is also my new husband. <laughs> I vowed that I would never marry again. He already has a wife, but it's okay. We've worked everything out. <laughs> she gets to keep him, live with him, and all that stuff, and do all the other wife shit. And I'll just touch his text from time to time, rub his head, both of them, and <laughs> take care of all the other stuff. Go ahead, boy. Tell your anyway. story. <laughs> so I was born prematurely, yes. seven and a half months, with a sickle cell disease. Wow. Um, when I was born, the doctor told my mom that I will now leave. Mm. My mother suffered from what we call post-pregnancy. Postpartum uh, depression. Yes, depression. Mm -hmm. So she abandoned me at, uh, at a very wow. uh, yeah, early age. You were born where? In the Congo. Mm -hmm. Congo, Central Africa, mm. when there's a war, the diamonds, the gold, all mm -hmm. that good stuff. Yeah. So from the age of, when I was a kid, I would, because I was sick all the time because of my sickle cell disease, mm -hmm. and the doctor told my parents I was never going to make it. Mm. And uh, every time I was crying because I was getting beat up because I was too skinny, too mm -hmm. sick, my great-grandmother was coming outside from my bedroom. And I have to tell you also, my great grandmother was blind. Wow. So every time she heard my cry, she come out in the bedroom with a cane, mm -hmm. swinging at people. That yeah, she couldn't even see. Yes. To protect her baby. That's correct. And telling people in Congo is this, which means, do not beat up my great grandson because one day he's going to be somebody. Mm, a warrior. Look yes. at that. So God. I grew up with the notion that one day I will be somebody, no matter what. That's right. Me too. Yes. Uh, from the age of seven until now, I have been my own. I had no mother. At seven? Yes. Oh, wow. No mother, no father. My father was coming in and out. Mm -hmm. So in June 5th, 1997, the Civil War broke up in the Congo. Mm -hmm. I was a child soldier. Yeah. I was a child soldier. Instead of me killing people, I was saving people's lives. Mm. Really? Yes. Really? Yeah. At seven? No. I, How yeah, old were you no, no, when no. you became a child soldier? Uh, I was eleven when I became a child soldier. Wow! And so, at eleven so, years old. Yes. You, you know, you could, you risked your own life because they would have killed you. Oh yeah! Oh oh oh! If oh, they oh, had not. Oh, hold on a second. So I saved one a Caucasian family's life. Yeah. And uh, he told the other Caucasian that they can trust me mm -hmm. because they were all hiding, being killed. Yeah. Because uh, uh, black people were chasing after white people during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Because it was our knowledge that white people, when they go to Congo, they take our diamonds and gold and uh, everything else mm -hmm. and they leave them for nothing. Mm -hmm. So what happened is during the Civil War, uh, bad people were looking to kill white people. Mm. So white people were, were hiding in they have their own hiding place. Yeah. So when I say were these life, white people that were indigenous of the Congo, did they like did they live there or were yes. they white people who were visiting just for No, no, they lived there, okay. uh, you know, their own businesses okay. and mine yeah. mine diamonds and yeah. gold, you know. Because in the Congo most white people the people that own the the wealth in the Congo, the Caucasian. Wow, okay, go ahead. Okay. Just like so, America. Yes. <laughs> go figure. <So. laughs> White people got all the money. <laughs> okay, so, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, 
when uh, I saved uh, when I saved the life of Mr. Paul the Purse Mark. That's what I call it. What's his name? Yeah, uh, Paul Kemp. Uh -huh. His name was Paul Kemp. When I, uh, after um, go ahead. You know. So hold after. On, hold on. Uh, oh, a little bit more. All right, now we got us in the shot. Now let's pray Cliff don't need this for nothing for a while. There you go. Okay, there we go. Go ahead. So, so what's his name? Paul Kemp. Paul Kemp. Mm -hmm. So after I say Paul Kemp's life, he told all the white people that you can trust Chikai. They call me Chico. Okay. You can trust Chico because he saved my life. Mm. So At Paul, 11. Well, no, no, I was all the older. Oh, well. Dutch Congo, right? Yes. You know? As opposed to? Well, the, 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 the colonial Tukang. rule in, in that part of Africa was Dutch. Yes. Netherlands. Uh, uh, no, but, right? but, yeah, yeah, Dutch, Belgium. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. So, and then uh, when he gave me the place where all white people was hiding, I went and started saving each one of them. Wow. So by saving them, you did what? By saving them, uh, so I have, I, I have a, a team of militia. Mm -hmm. So I was going there, get one family at a time, so you outside. were the leader of I, your team? Yes, I was the leader of my team. And how did you get your team to, to come along and go along with yes. this? Because I was working for the president of the Congo. Oh. I was part of the security. So you had protection. How, how, how did the school break out? Um, it was the north versus the south. So the north, was in power, the north was in power before, and the south came in with election, they won. Right. But it, because when the north came... They've not been in power for so many years. Right. Is it like the, the Tutsis and the Tutsis? No, 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 no. We're no. just not just political. Yes. Just political. Yes. Yes. No. Political. So when the, when the South came in power, you know, they didn't give the North. It was like payback. So the, the North came back and fight. And when the North is in, they're in power right now. For, but, they are? Yeah, right now. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. And uh, after sustaining their lives, my militia turns against me. Mm. Yes, because they realized that I knew too much where the wealth and uh, well, in the beginning was I was saving lives, we we're all happy, then it became too much for them, mm -hmm. and they thought that we are not, we were not getting paid enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's okay. Yes, in fighting, in fighting. Mm -hmm. So they turned against me. One day they came to my house, they raped my mother, they shot me, and stabbed me in the back. Oh my God! Yes. So I escaped. How old were you? I was, uh, I would say, 1997. I was 19. Mm. Nine, yeah, I was 19. Wow. Because I came to America, I was 20. How old are you now? I will be 40 in September. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Anyway. All right, go ahead. So, and... When I left the, uh, so when the, the white people that saved lives early would come to my rescue, mm. they gave me a forged passport to get out of Congo. Good, look at that. Yes. So the day I was leaving the Congo, my daddy told me that go to the white man country, mm. educate yourself, and one day come back to the Congo so you can save your people. So I left the Congo, I ended up in Belgium. Mm -hmm. I was homeless there. I was sleeping at the train station, eating from the white man trash can. From Belgium, I went to France. When I went to France, I was working. They, they told me, as a black person, there's only two jobs I could do. Security or hard labor job. So picking up heavy stuff. And I, with my mask, of course, they want me to pick up. So were you, were you physically like stronger yes I was, I was, I was, oh because being a child soldier yes. you had yes. you had okay go ahead okay you had to develop. so so and then uh i was working at, at the freight company picking up ice cube so the ice cube that you saw today wow. everything i do on the warrior fitness camp there's a story behind i gotta tell you i was ready to break up with you about that ice cube <laughs> but you helped me boy you helped me and then i was back with it i love it so um one day during my, during my break time at work, I watched this uh, music video, oh, Tupac yeah, Shakur yeah, 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 yeah. and Dr. Dre, California Love. 
Mm -hmm. On oh. February 14, 1998, mm. I came in America. Valentine's Day? Yes, ma'am. Were you already married or did no. you? No. Okay. I was single. So when I came to America, my first day in America, my second day in America was robbed by gunpoint. Mm. Yes. By who? A my, gang member? A gang member. He took my belonging and, and everything so I have. Everything you had? Yes. So now you're back to zero? Yes. And I found my, the next day I found a job at the martial arts studio as a janitor, cleaning the toilet. Mm -hmm. 20 years later, I'm still cleaning the toilet. But not, not at a martial arts nah, studio? Now nah, I own the toilet. Okay. Mm. So, yeah, I'll get some water, please. You own several toilets. Yes, now I own several toilets. And they're good toilets, too. <laughs> not those little low toilets like they have for skinny people. They're tall, high toilets for big, tall people. Like so, your facility, what gave you, I know that you had, so you started doing physical fitness. Yes. When? I started doing physical fitness when, I, oh, that's another story. So when I was in the martial arts studio, uh, one day the main instructor wasn't there. So somebody got to teach a class. And I taught the first class. And uh, after I taught the first class, the parents were all happy. I was teaching kids. Mm -hmm. They would tell me, uh, for years they've been bringing the kids to, to martial arts school, but nobody has never walked them out like the way I do. So that day after I kicked the butt, everybody went home and slept. So the next day, the mother came in to talk to my boss. We want Mr. Chikaya to teach a class again because every time he taught the class, those kids go home and sleep right. so we can spend some quality time with our spouses. <laughs> That's how everything started. Man. <laughs> so you became like the, yeah. you became like the Benadryl yeah. <laughs> of, of uh, the marriage community. Here we go, yes. Married with children. Yes. So let's fast forward to yeah. when you got married. What year was it? I got married in uh, 2005. Now you caught a lot of flack from the girls during this time about your choice yes. in a mate. And uh, like, what, what, how did you and your wife meet? So Let's don't even talk about who she is. Let's okay. talk about how you and she met. I was working, I was, I was in the Marines. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, Saint mission in Germany. Huh? U.S. Marine? Yes, Marine, yes. I met my wife at the train station. In Germany? In Germany. Okay. And my wife she from Bulgaria. Uh -huh. East of Europe. Okay. And uh, after we met, I think she dropped something on the floor. And when I pick it up, we made eye contact. And I told her that you'd be my wife. She just said, You lost your mind. Y'all Africans so aggressive. <laughs> I love you. What is your name? <laughs> and then, you, and go been, straight, you go straight from yes. how you doing to let's get married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, so you got people gathering in the back? They just yeah. want to like get like a... You know, you, you can get them in the candle room. Yeah, just get them to... But, but they can't... I, I, I they just, have to come this way. Yes. They, just I, wanna, they just want to know, to make sure that everything's going on today. No, 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 no. We are, we're, we're training class. Perfect. At 5.15. So, so get them in the candle room? Yes. Okay. But they can... Uh, oh, you know, wait, wait a second. I just, I, I just stay at uh, yes. right. And then just bring them through quietly. Yeah. And you know, just, 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 just let them there. I can bring them into the candle room and just let them start rolling out, foam rolling. No yeah, music. yeah, but they can't make too much noise. I'll just tell them to keep it quiet. No so that way okay. <laughs> okay. No, no. No, 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 yes. Okay. Yes. So, you met your wife, you knew she was going to be your wife because you wanted a wife, you needed a wife, or you liked her. Don't make me touch your thigh. I think, uh... You finished? I've been finished. Um, Nikki boyfriend? Can <laughs> you put some ice up in this? I'm sorry, Nikki's man. I mean, Nico, man. can you give her some ice? She's trying to separate me from my man. It's not happening. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Now, when. Um... That looks cute, Trey. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. So, when I met my wife, uh, uh, before she was my wife, we, uh, we made eye contact, and I said, You'll be my wife. You know, she thought I was crazy. You know, circumstances in life, like I always say, uh, 
Love has no color. Love My has queen. No. Sorry. Okay. No. Okay. Love, love, love has, has no color. Love has no boundaries. And then uh, we just. You, you know. said no, love has no color because she is what? My wife is Caucasian. Mm. She's a white from the east of Europe. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. No. And, and you uh, get a lot of flat because of that here in uh, America. Uh, in America, it's uh, my wife and I came from different background, so we n never lived where Caucasian people, African American people live here and they're Russia couples. Okay. What? We, you know, my wife. No, I got that part. Yes. You said but, you never lived. No, no, we we, we, we we never went through why, you know, when a black man date a white a white woman or mm -hmm. when a white woman date a black, you know, something like that. We never have this type of, uh, we never encountered. Okay. Okay, this type of rejection. Really? Yeah. Never. We never. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was also, but I heard about it. Yeah. I heard about it, uh, but I never had, you know, the discussions until. Yeah. You know, recently. recently. Mm -hmm. So, how did that make you feel? I, you know, I, I would tell you uh, honestly, it made me feel sad. Mm -hmm. It made me feel sad that you know, uh, to see how much of a black woman have suffered and feel rejected by mm -hmm. by black mm -hmm. men. Okay, I cannot answer that questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I don't regret marrying my wife. Mm -hmm. We have we've been married for 12 years. We have three beautiful children, half a children. Yes, we do uh, have three gorgeous yeah. children. So she takes care of me. And by the way, my wife, she's also in the medical field. She's a nurse practitioner. Okay. okay. So we're both into fitness and wellness and helping people. To well, I will life. say, having yeah. met your children, that your children seem so well grounded. Yeah. They don't seem affected by the colorism or mm -hmm. the differences that you know were brought up during our time together. Mm -hmm. And I, I love them. They seem Thank like you. wonderful kids, I, and I commend you on that. Thank you. And I guess I gotta commend my sister wife. <laughs> Wherever you are, <laughs> good job, girl. Yeah. Go ahead. Now my wife, she's a beautiful person, a beautiful minded person, she's educated, and she's... Is she uh, open minded? Yes, she is. So is she okay with the idea of plural marriage? Like, does she mind that you got a new woman? <laughs> <laughs> is she okay? Or have you talked to her yet? I don't if think... If you haven't, it's okay. I'll I don't, give you time. I don't think no woman, unless we're in Africa. That's not true. No. Oh, well, maybe. So, That's but not I'm, true. We could go to Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I you build a Utah. big compound. Hey, you're right. <laughs> But, you know, a queen. Yeah. No, no, my wife, uh, yeah. I believe in marriage is a woman and a man, you know. Not two women and a man? It's, or a man know, and a side chick? It's <laughs> A man and his it's, girlfriend? It's too much. A man and it's my too much work. babysitter? It's too much work. What? I'm ready. Are you ready? Are we ready? I thought I said I had to go back in. I don't know. Oh, oh, you ain't talking okay. about that. I'm already dealing with my sister. You want to fight? With you, but we don't have We're stopping to smack the shit out of her. You want to fight? Okay. No. Well, it looks like I'll be here till Friday. That's what I'm saying. And I'm at your beck and call. <laughs> well, we're going to do some more for sure. Okay. Because we got a cattle driver. Talk to me. I'll be here. So. Damn it. I mean, there's only two right now. but. And, um, mm -hmm. they, they can see. They can stay uh, at, at the front desk first. Yeah. Yes. Hey, now come on, let's yeah. go. Let me go uh, get my stuff. Yeah. So, Doc, we're gonna wrap this yes. up for now, but we're gonna pick this up when we talk on my show. There we go. Beautiful. We're and we're looking forward to you, the kids, the wife, everybody coming out to Orlando. No problem. And us having this in-depth conversation. Let's I want to talk about child soldiers. I want to talk about interracial marriages. Yeah. And I want to talk about um, you yeah, and your no life. No problem. And your inspiration. Thank you very much. And the things that motivate you, besides me. Just remember, yeah. my great-grandmother once said, which means one day you're going to be somebody. Lumbu Tumbo. Lumbu Chimoshi. Lumbu. Lumbu. Chimoshi. Chimoshi. Boba. Boba. Muntu. Lumbu. Chimoshi. Bomba. Muntu. What? 
Okay? What she said. <laughs> All right, so that's yeah, it. Thank you, thank honey. You know. Thank you for a great time. Thank Anytime. you for the amazing hospitality. Anytime. And thank you for being a sport. Okay, good to go.